here. Today I will be showing you the super DIY method for making chainmail links. There are a lot of other methods available online and I think it is cheaper to make your own links as opposed to buying them in bulk. However, this method is for people like me who don't have access to a lot of power tools um, or anything beyond an extremely basic tool set. For the tutorial today, I will be using craft wire 16 gauge. You can feel free to try this project with any gauge. The 16 gauge is a very light gauge. It'll also make a very lightweight armor if you're planning on wearing it. It's also not very durable. As you can see here, it's extremely thin and I can hand bend this. This project is going to be easiest with um, wires that you can hand bend. However, if you need to use a pliers, you can figure out a method that will work for you. Our materials for this project are your wire, cutters, your favorite Halloween pencil. Make sure the pencil is round. And then it's a good idea to have pliers on hand. These are my super fancy needle nose pliers, and then I have some pretty heavy duty ones here. With that, we'll begin. So these are some links that I made earlier today. With this method, you're not going to get the most perfect links like you would if you bought on online or use some power tools, but I think they're serviceable and quite pretty and they're round. They'll do what we need them to do. Our method is going to start with a pencil, a round pencil. You're going to take the end of your wire and place it perpendicular across the pencil, holding the end in place with your thumb. It's a good idea at this point if you have gloves to wear them because the end will hurt. So then we're going to wrap the wire around to meet that end. You can see I'm doing that here. The wires have now crossed, and that will be eventually our first link. You're going to continue wrapping this way until you have as many coils as covers the pencil or until you run out of wire. And you see I've left some space in between these coils. This wire is a little bit bent already. Generally speaking, you want to keep those coils as tight as possible without overlapping them. And as you do this, you will get a better feel for how to wrap them tightly. Might be a good idea to start working out if you plan on doing this because it takes a little bit of strength. I'm just going to finish wrapping up the rest of this wire pushing it together to try to close some of those gaps. And now I've come to the end and I'm just going to wrap the very end of that coil around the pencil. Using my needle nose pliers, I can try to batten down some of those edges and make the wire behave a little bit more. And there we have our coil. Now the coil should be able to slide along the pencil. And what we're going to do is we're just going to slide it right off. Now you have a circular coil. It kind of looks like a spring. And we're going to cut right where the edge We're going to cut right where the edge meets the coil underneath, where it makes a perfect circle. So I have just my basic cutters here. Just going to make a little snip. And there's our first link. And I'm going to cut off that hanging edge. This is not the method that will create the most out of your resources, but it is the easiest I have found so far and by far the cheapest. And there's our first link. It's round. I'm going to continue cutting this method, putting my cutter right up against the very edge of the wire and then cutting where it creates a circle. If you have better cutters, you could try to do more than one at once, but I found that for the most efficiency and 
I'm sorry, I found that for the best cuts, I just do one at a time. So I'm just going to continue cutting this wire until I finished it. And there's one of our links. And these links, you're going to have to bend a little bit once you get them into a pattern, but they're going to work very nicely. And I apologize for the graininess of my video today.